Hi, I'm Symphoniers, and today we're taking a look at a zero rare build of Neva stalked by nightmares. N uh, Neva is a commander that kind of surprisingly impressed me just in that she has some nice, relatively easy ways to make her uh, pay out or like to lean into her themes. In particular, just things like sagas that automatically put themselves into the graveyard work really well with Neva. So we have a bunch of those, um, all the good ones, uh, common and uncommon, as well as just a bunch of enchantment creatures and stuff that have additional utility like Spirited Companion, uh, Timurat, uh, and yeah, a bunch of that stuff. We are playing a Shrine package in this list and it's been surprisingly impressive um, with Goshen Tai as maybe a standout just because all of the spirit tokens that it generates actually work really well with our soft aristocrats theme. Uh, we have Vampiric Rites uh, as well as Doc Side Chef and one or two other sh uh, sack outlets. Um, we have one really nice over overlap piece in Lampad's of, uh, Lampad of Death's Vigil, which is both an enchantment that can sack itself for Neva, and uh, something that we can just feed uh, like spirit tokens into the wood chipper of to drain the opponent of life and uh, keep our own life nice and high. Aside from that, it's pretty basic. Uh, we have Hateful Eidolon as well, just to capitalize off of like Myers Grasp and, I don't know, Infernal Scarring. Um, we're running Ethereal Armor to, like we have a couple good auras, all that glitters to just make a big threat uh, that crushes in, hits the opponent. Um, and then if they kill it, we get some draw off of the Eidolon. So yeah, we don't lean super heavily into the removal as Eidolon decks often do, but we have stuff that kind of works on both sides of like one or two removal auras, a couple uh, things that improve our own creatures. A bit of interaction in the deck and like Banishing Light Ossification, I think is in here somewhere maybe. Yeah, Ossification. Uh, yeah, O-Ring type things. Back for seconds, a nice way to just get more stuff back from the graveyard uh, and ensure that we can close out a game with um with stuff that's honestly most of the deck oh revenge of ravens we do have a also a kind of like soft jail theme uh, or like tax theme with revenge of ravens um trespassers curse and i feel like there's probably something else ill-gotten inheritance to like tick away and again just remove stuff yeah so we're we're just trying to keep the opponent's resources low while we grind out a win through like sacking things and swinging in with big uh, ethereal armored eidolons or whatever and yeah just see what we can do. A uh, bunch of generic value cards in the sagas too. Uh, the mana is unimpressive as I say with all the budget decks. If you improve one thing first, get better mana because this mana is awful. <laughs> It's really bad and responsible for a lot of mulligans, so just getting like more dual lands in here will improve the list uh, pretty notably. Uh, but yeah, that's more or less everything. If you like the deck tech and like the video, like, subscribe, etc. helps the channel a lot. Give me money through various links in the description. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you, and let's get on to some actual gameplay. Sure. Like edge walls, taps for black, we have shrines. I guess the shrines are expensive. I was thinking they were cheaper for some reason. Oh, you're destroy, not drain. I thought it was drain for some reason. I'm thinking of the other one. Okay. It doesn't matter, it's fine. <laughs> Zeatora, scary. Warlock class, sure. We hit land drops, which is neat, nothing to ossify, um, do the morbid opportunist. I guess the morbid opportunist is a little bit awkward with some of our removal being discard based. Um, or sorry, exile based. Tossing the ossification there might not be correct. Uh, I think I'm actually going to do the evolving wilds here because I'm more excited about getting our four drops out than the morbid opportunist out on curve. So we have a white source in hand, grab a black source. Hmm. Goshen Tai have shared purpose, I guess. Or like we're probably more excited about Goshen Tai have shared purpose. Right, it makes spirits not shrines. It's the the good or like the big five color commander that spits out shrines and does actual snowballing. Um, hmm. 
It's fine, don't worry about it. Um Do 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 the Goshen tie. I guess maybe we're supposed to do Neva first. I don't know. Doesn't seem wildly exciting. Hateful Eidolon, hi, good to see you, good to have you. Uh, we would like to... Yeah, the Goshen Tie of Weenies. Um... Let's do... Let's just get some junk out, or like, do this, and the Eidolon, and pay for the Shrine proc. Spit out a spirit token. Uh, then we have a spirit token that we can zerg into stuff with, and that seems fine. I've seen infiltrator shore, so they're very sack oriented, which is understandable. Birth of Miletus. Sure. Um. Hmm. Do this. Do the Morbid Opportunist. Um, I think this Spear Token's the only thing we really want to chip in with. Yeah, they unsurprisingly don't block it. The Opportunist makes, like, chumping with the Eidolon or something like that a bit better. Might do Infernal Scarring on the Eidolon. Ooh, that's fun. Okay. Infernal Scarring and, uh, and Ethereal Armor. 8-7 First Strike Lifelink, let's go. Pretty good. I'm here for it. Yeah, curious to see what they do here. Because chumping, it's not great. So they opt not to. Uh, we can spit out more spirit tokens. Hmm... Jewel Thief. Sure. I assume Zetor is coming out soon? Um... Hmm... We should probably do the Goshen Tie of Hidden Cruelty here, actually, huh? Because... Or we maybe should have done that a little bit sooner. I wasn't really thinking about the fact that it is recurring removal. Um, pew pew. We have two shrines. Okay, I'll take that. Morbid opportunist trigger. Mm-hmm. Honden of Cleansing Fire is neat. And we want to decline and then auto pay, take out the infiltrator. Can kill the jewel thief next turn, which is something it's still prox, right? Yeah. Uh they could have cracked the treasure token to keep it up, I guess, although they might not want to do that if they are trying to get, like, Seatora out this turn and don't have another land uh, land in hand. Um, yeah, okay. Bonk. At sushi happens. I assume they're flinging at sushi at... I don't know what they fling it at. I think face is incorrect. Um, we still have the hateful idol on. Just doing a hateful idol on things. Yeah, that shrine is recurring removal, so fair opportunist proc, which is nice. Celebrant proc, also nice. They do have six treasures to work with. Hmm, right, that plus, or at Sushi's proc plus the Zeotora proc gives them a lot of mana. For a lot of treasure. Uh, they big score, toss, beautiful and perfect mushroom sun, how dare opponent. Um, hmm, arcane signet, sure. Uh, so we can do this. 
do the Honden? Hmm. Uh, big attack with Eidolon. Or we do this. Do we keep zerging away? I guess we don't. Just given that we can do the proc, or get a mor uh, morbid opportunist proc anyway. They throw a chump block render it, sure. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> oh, sorry, I was thinking. <laughs> Me just entirely, I don't know, zoning out and forgetting the fact that they uh, killed the Goshen Tie of Hidden Cruelty. Uh, we at least can spit out spirits, uh, spirits on the regular, which is something. Consuming Blaub. Okay. Interesting? Hmm. Um. I am unsure how I feel about this. We have a lot of life to work with. I guess we're mostly concerned if they kill the hidden opportunist and we- or morbid opportunist and we don't draw any other source of card advantage. Uh, I assume the opportunist kill is coming up. Yeah. Eh? Or one of the shrines, maybe? Or like the- the Goshen Tive shared purpose? I think I would- ooh. Don't know that I like that. All that glitters is fun. Hmm. Do we just make Eidolon huge? It just gets blown out by removal if we do that, which is a concern. Mm-hmm. Uh, Revenge of Ravens is something. It's a way for us to defend against Zablob. Oh, we could have gotten Goshen Tai back. I should. I should remember that. Um, we have a good attack with the Eidolon here. So I feel like I maybe enjoy. I guess we can get Ossification. Sorry, it's Creature or Enchantment. Oh, I should have thought about that way sooner. First game with Neva. Um, Ossifying. Yeah, Ossify. Oh, uh, we want the Ossification, don't we? Um, ossifying the Zeotora is something I definitely should have thought about and probably done way earlier. Um, just chip in with the Eidolon. Forty life, opportunist proc, banishing light. Okay, that's good for taking out the consuming blob too, or like multiple pieces of removal here, not too shabby. Oh, we're getting- I was worried about opportunist procs earlier being an issue, uh, but we're certainly getting a bunch of them, so. Right. Lose his life. Do 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 do. Find cart. Uh they could overrun, they can do a fling, 12, etc, etc. That's fine. Opponents at 14, which we like. Alright, you're an end step trigger specifically. Been a little while since Warlock class, uh, since I played against it consistently. Opponent domes the face. We go down to 17, but don't worry about it, it's fine. Uh, ossify the Zeotora. Mm. Kind of want a banishing light, the consuming blob. I don't know if that's like wildly correct, but the thing that I like about that is it just lets us slam and all that glitters on. I don't know, all that glitters on Nev. Neva, Nev. The whatever, let's call the whole thing off, keep the opportunist and the celebrant. Or no, sorry, we just have lethal there with Nev. I... Uh, I knew that was the play to do, but my brain just didn't click through the math for some reason. Uh, we get there, which is neat. Love to get a win first game with uh, the Neva Zero Rare deck. Good games to the opponent. This hand seems fine-ish. 
in particular, just like Eidolon and Infernal Scarring and stuff early seems workable. Uh, get the tap land out of the way. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to prioritize the Eidolon, actually. It's fine, don't worry about it. Um... Hmm... Do Eidolon put Scarring on the Celebrant? E less good for us. Uh, get the Signet out. Hmm. I guess we could do this. Or, like, just play this out here anyway, then maybe do, like, uh, Eidolon plus Orzhov Charm next turn, or if they kill it, we can play out Neva, get the Celebrant back. Something like that. Pelt Collector. Okay, Ruined Crown, um, 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 um. Yeah, so let's do this. And this. And I immediately forgot about Pelt Collector's text. I actually don't hate the trade here, um, and I don't think they would trade if it was a 1-1, or, like, they wouldn't block if it was a 1-1, so, eh. Goofy sequencing kind of works, maybe, sort of. Uh, Omen of the Dead does have Flash, which is nice, so we can, like, chump block with the Eidolon, for example. Um, Grave Shifter. Okay. Hmm. Definitely kind of concerned about the opponent's deck, because slivers can go big fairly quickly. Uh, Chainer's Torment? I think we take a trade here. If only because we have the Eidolon down, they don't take it. Okay. Interesting. Um, let's give Chainer's Torment a shot. Just get us a big meatball creature to work with. Uh, we don't block... Or, I mean, maybe we do. Hmm. Doesn't need, they don't even get double strike with double first strike? How dare. Flavor fail. Warp, 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 warp. Um, yeah, Trainer's Torment happens. Uh, vaguely tempted to get Neva, Neva down just so she sees the tor Trainer's Torment thing fire. However, I kind of like Shrine Steward search for... Where are you? Goshen Tie of Hidden Cruelty? Wait, is that true? Um... Actually, maybe we just want some removal, hmm. Uh, let's, let's actually do a Myers Grasp with the Eidolon. Um... Yeah, sorry, I was gonna, I said the Goshen Tie of Hidden Cruelty, and then it's like, if we only have one shrine, we can only take out the Striking Sliver, which is bad. Uh, Wooberg happens, so yeah, the first sliver goes burr. We're... Oh, I thought that was a time warp for some reason, or uh, not a time warp, All Runs Epiphany. I don't know why. Just the art at small scale, I guess. Blue atmosphere and central figure. Um, and I was like, oh, of course. Uh, but yeah, okay. So... Um, I don't think our blocks are going to get much better, so I'm just going to jump with the Celebrant to get a Hateful Eidolon trigger. Maybe I should be thinking about that differently, given that Chainer's Torment is about to proc, so... I don't know, we'll see. Ugh. <sighs> Ooh, 
12, 12. Um, Myers grasp on the pelt collector. Anguished on making. I mean, that seems good for stalling. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do that here. Hey, littlest cabbage. Good to see you, good to have you. We're actually staying surprisingly in this. I guess the first strike sucks, but we have a 12-12 now. So they can't attack without bleeding creatures. Um, and we can flash in the Omen of the Dead to get the Cruel Celebrant back. Right, they do have enough mana to recast, which is a little bit awkward for us. Agnes is good, but not incredible, given that they don't have the all your slivers have haste sliver. Um, hmm. I guess the first strike with the 12-12 is weird, huh? Um. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Doing a big thinking. Do, 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 rawhide. Uh, get Neva back. Recur the Myers Grasp. Um, drop one of these first strike nerds. That gives them... yeah, they can still first strike, which is awkward. Um, I don't think we need more land at this point. Okay, we get more land. But yeah, they have... they unfortunately have exactly 12 power and toughness of first strike, so... Uh, no attacks. Hmm... Changeling. Hmm, so something's dying soon. Which is awkward. Hmm. Maybe there's a different way... The first strike here is so annoying with the... given that we have a 12-12. Um... This stuff happens. <laughs> Savior of the sleeping. Okay, we would like to do what? Um, brain, get you out, get a guardian idol out. Um, is this correct? Our attacks are bad, so try to get the thing that can generate blockers out. I mean, I think this is just where we get bodied by uh, slivers getting a ton of extra value for free off of the first sliver. Hmm. Oh, they do have a bunch of shapeshifters, huh? Are we just dead on board? What are you? Again? Oh, we're extremely dead. Okay. Yeah, slivers does sliver things, and we die because we can't keep up. Rip. Sure? Hand just seems okay. Um... I think we do... Birth on one? Or, sorry, on two. Uh, I guess we just evolving wilds for a black source because we do have Timoret. Um... 
do 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 do. Hmm. I don't know if we're super concerned about doing curse on curve. I guess we can. Or is of charm sure? Uh, kind of want to get. Kind of want to get this and wicked visitor down, honestly. Um, so that wicked visitor sees birth of Melita's sleeve. Or Melitus. Uh, oops, all two drops anyway. Rip. Oh, right, they need to do the thing. Never mind, it's fine. Never didn't have it. Um, play the Black Source, do the Wicked Visitor. Um, <laughs> do Neva next, maybe? Harold's Horn? Harold. Um. Hmm. Kind of want to get the curse on them, although it's a little bit weird with how our mana is right now. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Never go. Hmm. Maybe do the rune of mortality on the visitor. Is this the Shelob brain? No, this is the same one as earlier, right? Um, I would like to kill that Realm Walker, although that might not be super doable. I like the Ruined Crown here, actually, just because it gives us... Uh, I guess nothing's in the graveyard, so it doesn't super duper matter. Um, never mind. Uh, Trespasser's Curse. Mm -hmm -hmm. I should have done something else. Still never mind. Um, kill the Realm Walker, because top of library effects are really good. Do they have a protection spell? Oh no, they're just gonna kill Neva? Okay, I guess. Just seems rude, quite frankly. Uh... Doo -doo. Why is it displaying the... Oh no, sorry, Herald's Horn. Duh. Um, Dark Ritual, okay. Shelob time? Mm-hmm. Day pouch. Um. Let's do this. Uh, grab another planes. Play out old Timmy. Toss a rune of mortality on the visitor, I guess. No attacks. Feel like stalling here is better. Twin Silk Spider. Our hand is pretty land heavy, which we don't love. She love now hexproof, okay. So I was gonna say that would be a decision or an attack. Um, ward two. I guess we only have one shrine, so that procs a little bit weird. Uh, let's do the Ruined Crown first and try to get some more information, or like more, um, more stuff to work with. Banishing Light's not bad, although Hexproof now, so, eh. 
Uh, Goshentai, I guess. No, no attacks. Hmm. Definitely kind of wishing we had, like, recurring card draw. We have one or two cards that do that in our deck. Um. Brain, where, where are you? Uh, you know, the vampiric rites. Vampiric rites and... That might be the main thing, actually. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but... Anyway. We're just vibing, staring at spiders. Wicked Visitor procs, which is good. Um... Kind of want to play Mindstone Crack Mindstone, although I guess that might not be, like, deeply efficient. Uh, uh maybe just do Neva. Um, no attacks. Uh, decline, because Ward 2. Yeah, the shrines do some actually kind of decent work. Also, your toughness, right? Yes. I was just looking at, like, can we kill the twin silk spiders? Um. Our opponent doing some hovers. Rot Widow Pack does some stuff. Skyfisher Spider, sure. Kill permanent. Um, maybe we would have done the Trespasser's Curse, honestly. Okay. It's not a recurring card draw, but does help us establish some um, shrine stuff. So that's fun. Uh, shrine stuff go. Or, or yeah, sorry, brain. Ensure that we can do that. Do we want to banish the Skyfisher Spider? Um... Sure... It's not super relevant now, but the death proc... Oh, actually, I guess this is... this is the move, huh? Because it just slows down their whole deal. Um, I was not thinking about the fact that Banishing Light is any permanent. So that happens, we do... Uh, let's crack the Mind Stone, actually... Or, I guess, deck then. Or, like, try to be vaguely responsible-ish. Um, do this. We do have a shrine proc that we maybe want to pay for, but uh, we can do that, so it's fine. Just don't equip the Runed Crown. Life of Tashiro Umazawa, sure. No attacks. Um, I forgot about the ward, too. Whoops. That's going to keep throwing me, isn't it? Um, it's not not a big deal. We just take out the twin silk spider, but still. Hmm. Lol. I'm. <sighs> yeah, not a card I miss from standard. My words are for ambitious minds. God, they really have been printing gross black cards for, like, four years, huh? Oh, you're fun. Okay. Um... Yeah, cast with bargain. Sack a wall. Uh, two of them into your library. Sorry, I haven't. I don't think I've cast Rowan's Grim Search before. Lampad of Death Vigil is something. Um, I like both of these anyway, even if they're not like deeply exciting. Uh, we do those. Uh, <laughs> Dommy Spider Mommy is a thing. Sorry, just brain, brain dying. Um, stick the lamp pad. Uh, stick the order. Get that ticking. 
I just need to take game actions, don't mind me. Uh, this does not... Okay, land pad is one of the better sack outlets, weirdly, or I kind of forget about that sometimes, so just do this, decline. Um, Lolf does Lolf things. I'd probably be more excited about Lolf if, yeah, she wasn't massively played for her entire time. Instead. Uh, uh, deadly dispute on the spider token. And I, the generous one. I do you like the trespassers curse here, or like they're good against the spider token stuff? Hmm. I guess we can keep suppressing their strategy too, or like we can life of Toshiro Umazawa the two one. Um, maybe do some other stuff. If they start attacking, we... I can't really attack effectively, huh? With two death... or sorry, one death toucher. Um, they go for the card draw... Vocal fry, vocal fry, will you do the fandango? Eat a wall, just for fun. Savior of the sleeping. Here. I don't need more land. So we would like to Life of Toshiro Umazawa the 2 1. Um. Sorry, just thinking for a second. I was like. Do we just want to feed things into the lamp pad of Death's Vigil, Wood Chipper? That's certainly an option. Um, remember the stuff. No attacks. We're surprisingly good at stonewalling with this deck, which is interesting. Um, auto pay, nuke the twin silk spider. Resolve, auto pay. Chew through the ward, thin out their board. My this maybe gives us an attack next turn, probably not a good one. We can also shrink stuff down so that at end of turn we can do the Goshentai of Hidden Cruelty, like with the Toshiro Umazawa. Uh, eat stuff out of the graveyard with Timuret to minimize Prox? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Lamp Head of Death's Vigil is surprisingly good here. Lamp Head can eat itself, can't it? Sacrifice a creature. Oh no! Bad touch, bad touch. Um, okay. Uh, auto pay. Eat the Goshen tie. Um, that's annoying, because we almost... Yes. Yes, thank you. Love to draw an uncommon that helps deal with the fact we just got mythic Uh, pretty cool and good. Hmm. I will Drain them. Uh, they do have the food token to work with, but listen, it's fine, don't worry about it. We have another Life of Toshiro Umazawa proc. Um, we can bargain this, put the lamp pad onto the field. It's only one of them, right? Yeah, we can put the lamp pad onto the field. Uh, Glorious Sunrise, I guess, is a problem. Uh, hit us. No block. We're at 41. It's fine. Um, doot, doot, doot. Sorry, just thinking. Um, I don't know that we actually want to pay for the ward. I don't know that we actually want to pay for the ward. Ooh. 
this stuff happens. Don't need more land. Uh, back for seconds. Bargain. Kind of whatever. Pick two. Pick two. How many enchantment creatures do we have? At least it's just Timurit. Um, or no, there's also you. Okay. Sorry, I forgot about the Wicked Visitor, too. Uh, food token. Um, put you onto the battlefield. Play out the Wicked Visitor. Uh, Lampad, you, Lampad, uh, mm. train them for two, bunch of stuff happens. Cool celebrant. Oh, you're very good. Okay. Yeah, we don't actually have enough mana to kill them this turn, but we do a big, big hit and heal back up to 40. So that's good. Um. Hmm. This game is neat. Or like we're getting to do a lot of stuff, so that's fun. Um. Savior of the sleeping big. It's not the one that makes us shuffle, so that's neat. Uh, we will land pad the savior, I guess, because it's dying, and we whiff them searching for mana. Uh, they drain to... or they're down to three. They don't have any food. They can gain three life off of Glorious Sunrise. We're taking... potentially... Uh, Sorry, that's 15, 16, 17 if they attack hold, which is fine, or like we can take that hit. Then we can Cruel Celebrant. Um, you a secret. Sorry, 17 plus. I guess they can't actually activate that ability. Herb or Grief Possession, sure. That's fine. I feel like they should have done the Rot Widow pack sooner? Because they have a lot of spiders and doming us for um, seven a turn or whatever is not bad, although it is pretty mana intensive. But they could have done the mana mode on Glorious Sunrise. Anyway, Sanctum proc down to six. Uh, cruel Celebrant. Lampad, the memory of Tashiro. Bing bang bong. Uh, Nev proc, I don't think it matters. Or, like, we have the kill here, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, do do do. Eat Nev. And yeah, we get to kill them with the uh, aristocrat stuff. Cool game. Or, like, we're able to just stonewall them and then kill them with, like, sack outlets and things. We get to play aristocrats that round. Um, like, proper, proper aristocrats, which is kind of interesting. Uh, do a little bit of, like, prison-y things with the Sanctum and the Trespassers curse. Anyway, good games to the opponent. Okay. Plus one, plus one counter, Twisted Embrace. Two lands. Two lands and a mid. Or, like, I guess it's a fairly interactive-ish hand, but I kind of want to mull... This is no white mana. Gamble? We have Hateful Eidolon and Elspeth's Nightmare. And I guess now Blood Artist, okay. Um, so yeah, we can do Paul Blardist, uh, Mall Painter on two. Why are you playing Job on Do List? Okay, anyway. Uh, do this. No attacks. I wonder if we just chump block the Do List. They're definitely considering if they should do the attack here. Um, I'm gonna gamble and say that this is fine, or like just that with the clean Elspeth's Nightmare kill. It's a little bit more compelling to do this. 
Lardist triggers. We go boom bum. Boom boom. Um, yeah, attack with the zero one to assert dominance. Okay, so just case of things. Uh, even the score seems real mid. Skyclave Relic seems like the more practical hit. A ruined crown hit. Mm, death touch maybe? Lifelink can be handy, but we don't really have much of a board to work with, so death touch is something. Land? No, Myers Grasp is okay-ish though. Um, especially if they sorcery speed stuff for some reason. I guess Myers Grasp doesn't kill the Annex Sentry. Hmm. Would love to hit land drops, even just aside from needing white mana. Because we do have fours and fives and things that we care about. I'd like to keep stuff on the field for the moment. I guess the hope is that they, like, annex Sentry the Blood Artist and then... Yeah, we get to keep the Eidolon, which is decent. Oath of the Grey Host. Um, pretty annoying that we are missing land drops. It's kind of bonus annoying just in that we have the Birth of Miletus in hand that can help us curve up. Opponent, would you like to flash in your fairy? No attacks. Eidolon's on blocking duty. Yeah, like the Cut of the Prophets or whatever is a draw three here. Which is good, or like it's fun. Um, but it's not especially backbreaking. Burp, burp, burp. This stuff happens. Fairy Vandal chips in. We go to 15. We keep not drawing lands. Bruh. Okay, we hit a land. Um, we can at least play out Oath of the Grey Host and the Honden of Night's Reach. <sighs> um, I feel like Honden is the move, given that they're a draw extra card stack. We eventually hit white mana. Woo! Mm-hmm. Technically a land, the best kind of land. Um, yes, we do this stuff. I'm annoyed we had those, like, multiple turns of just really awkward draws. Um, or just awkward curve, because I think we're able to hang somewhat effectively here. Um, yeah, just kind of clunky and weird. Uh, we get Unctus Retrofitter. Okay, Ossification is nice here. We would... Sorry, let's play this properly. Birth of Miletus to get a Plains. that let us cast Ossification. We Ossify Keza. Um, just to buy time. Uh, I guess we could also do... I don't think we're that... Oh, uh, do we want to get Goshintai down? I think I want to get uh, Keza off the battlefield. Just with the Teferi's Ageless Insight too. Um, reducing their ability to drain us out here seems nice. Hmm. Do an attack? We have two poison on us. I don't know the... They haven't shown us any other toxic or infect or whatever, so... 
Or I guess there is Unctus Retrofitter. Eh, it's fine. Did they replay Keza, sure. We should maybe focus on getting some shrines down based off of current stuff. Um, hmm. They toss charge of the mites. Okay, so they infect and things does seem to be at least somewhat relevant to them. So, 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 I kind of just want to do this and do I actually care about paying for the proc? Eh. Let's do this and get Elisil core down, I think. Um, I don't necessarily care about generating chump blockers right away, but I do like getting the discard on Honden of Night's Reach up. Um, chip in, deal two. Deal two and lifelink. We have a bunch of blockers now for the Annex entry, so that's no longer a concern. Also, we have more mana than I thought for some reason, so we get to do this. Uh, LSL Core helps us stabilize a bit, which is nice. Rexian Atlas goes Burr. Keza does Drain. Inspiring Commander. Okay. Cleansing Nova, huh. Oh. Um, sacrifice a creature or a planeswalker. Medium. Pretty medium. I'll take this, I guess, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. Eldest Reborn is just a nice card advantage. It does stuff. It does stuff and things. Um. Sure, we get Paul Blardist back. Uh. Next, we do an attack with you, uh, not with you. Maybe with you. Sure. We can attack with the spirit tokens as a treat. Um, I'm okay doing this just because we have the blood artist down and the Elisil core. Because, um, yeah, we effectively push for like quite a bit more damage there, and we can also replace them end of turn with the Goshen Tive Shared Purpose proc. Um, yeah, end turn, pay for this. Heal up a bit. Mm-hmm. It's fine, don't worry about it. Oh, this bullshit. Uh, okay. Uh, fake card goes brrrr. Hmm. Honden does Honden things. Hidden stockpile. Um, this gives us the ability to do sack stuff, which is kind of nice. Um, I kind of want to shrine steward, though. You know what we can do? I always forget, or I keep forgetting that shrine steward can tutor for things other than shrines. We can do this, and we can grab an ethereal armor. I think that's a way to apply a fair bit more pressure. I guess Zinctum of Stone Fangs also does some good work. Um, I don't know, I kind of just like the ethereal armor. We have options with Shrine Steward anyway. I think there's pros and cons to a bunch of things. Toss the ethereal armor on the Hateful Eidolon. Hateful Eidolon gets plus one, two, three... A bunch, nine, ten, lifelink, first strike, death touch. You love to see it. Um, it big. It hit them, it lifelink. We do stuff, yay! 
Um, auto pay, spit out some more nerds. I maybe should have attacked with more of the one ones. It's fine, don't worry about it. Okay, so it goes burr, land. That's good for us. Um. Yeah, I feel like the toxic sub theme in their deck is a mistake. <laughs> oh, opponent not happy with their situation. Yeah, we keep pressuring them there, or like we keep spitting out things. Uh, we're hidden stockpile also lets us like drain them for two for. Sorry, do we just have a, or we don't kill them immediately off of just like sacking with stockpile, but we can get annex entry back, exile Kesa, uh, or or whatever, and. Yeah, we're... Ooh, they are in rough shape. Good games to the opponent. Thank you for watching the video, and an extra big thank you to the Patreon patrons and YouTube members that help make these videos possible. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye